Hello and you're very welcome. In today's video we're going to make drop scones. Well that's what I was brought up calling them in our house. You might know them as scotch pancakes or syrup pancakes but it's the same difference. So let's get back on. I've prepared some of the ingredients already ahead of time. So in here I have eight ounces of plain flour. I'm sorry we're in ounces. You need to work out what that is in grams. This is a family recipe from my granny and my mum that I've adapted, so I only know it as ounces. There's half a teaspoon of table salt, one tablespoon of normal um, sugar, the sugar you would put in your tea. When we're talking about teaspoons and things, I should point out that I use these now as measuring for consistency. For instance, when my mum makes this recipe, she uses different spoons, but I have these set of measuring spoons in the house, and if I keep using these every time, if the recipe doesn't suit me, or if I want to make it sweeter or less sweet, I can, I know what measurement I actually use, so I can adjust it the next time. So I would suggest that you always use the same measuring utensil when you're measuring out your ingredients. Then there's a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, which you can still buy, yes, and a teaspoon, which is equivalent of five grams of cream of tartar, and Dr. Rutger saves the day. You can sometimes buy tubs of cream of tartar, but he does little packets of five grams of cream of tartar in packs of, I think it's four or five, that most supermarkets have. So all my dry ingredients are in here. So as I say, I've got plain flour, table salt, household sugar, cream of tartar, and bicarbonate of soda. Just going to tip that in. Give it a quick sift. Any big lumps? Probably the sugar. Yuck. Right. Make a, a well in the middle. Put these away for now. Thank you, Dr. Utker. Should point out I'm not sponsored by Dr. Utker. Now, one egg. Yep, one medium Irish egg, still in the box. Now the handy thing with eggs is the shells I'm going to put in my composter because they have a good source of calcium for fruit and veg, especially the tomatoes. But more importantly, so is the box. The box goes in the composter and that will break down as some of my browns to eke out the greens. So that's all going to go in the composter later. Now the syrup, golden syrup. Now my recipe is three tablespoons. If you want to make it sweeter or less sweet, you can adjust this to yourself. But this is just how I like them. There's probably people watching this right now screaming at the screen. So that was three generous tablespoons of syrup. And then the last ingredient is milk. Now it should be buttermilk, if you can still get it, which I have seen in some of the market supermarkets here. Mm. 
mix that in just till I see how much I'm going to need I can't give you a quarter today you really just have to do it to your own light That's getting there. If I kept adding more and more milk, it would make it much thinner and then I could make big pancakes. But I want to make drop scones. I don't actually want it to be too runny a consistency. so the camera can see. <laughs> Giving it a good beat. The secret to good drop scones is plenty of air. The cream of tartar and the bicarbonate of soda will react anyway as the rising agents, but it doesn't hurt doesn't hurt to beat plenty of air into it. I would say that's about the right consistency. I'm going to leave that now. The secret is to leave it for about five, six minutes just to rest. While that's doing that, I'm going to prepare my griddle. My griddle pan is ready. It's on at five out of nine on the induction. And I've got a bit of kitchen roll with some olive oil just to give it a wee clean between each go. You could use margarine if you want. I've got my mixture. I'll try a wee spoon. There's nice bubbles in it. Try a wee spoon as a test run for you. You can make these any size or shape you want. We used to have great fun doing it with mum and gran, making all kinds of weird and wonderful shapes and sizes. As I say, if you put more milk in this, it'll thin it down and you can make much, much thinner pancakes, more like a crepe. You probably have to take the some of the sugar and the salt. Uh, you probably take the sugar and syrup out if you're making a crepe. Now, as it's starting to cook, you should be able to see air bubbles and air pockets forming on the upper side. And once it gets to a stage where they're forming in the batter and then once they pop, that the batter doesn't run back in to fill them up, you know it's time to turn them over. That's pretty close. Look at that beautiful golden colour. Turn it over. Give it a good cook on this side. You can normally tell when they're ready to take off because they lift really easily off the non-stick. They also rise in the middle ever so slightly. You also want a bit of colour on the underside. See that one's done. Pop them down to cool. Right. Quick wipe. Same again. Here are the finished results. So these are my drop scones. If you put them in an airtight tin, they'll last maybe two, three days at the most in the house. My advice is eat them while they're fresh or put them straight in the deep freeze. So I hope you found this video informative and helpful. I hope you'll have a go at making this recipe. Remember a recipe is just like a serving suggestion. You can tweak it and change it to your own likes. Uh, have a go. Let me know in the comments how you get on. And please like and feel free to subscribe. Until next time, cheerio.